Now, bird tables are a great way to welcome more birds into your garden and enrich the ecosystem too. But how do you go about building one? I'm joined by carpenter Wayne Perry, who a little bird tells me knows all about it. <laughs> you do. Have you got one at home? I have got a bird table at home, and we love it. My daughter loves it. Even got one with camera on it as well. Oh, wonderful. Absolutely love it. Lovely. So I'm going to show you how to create a bird table. But what's great about it, I'm only using two tools. So uh -huh. I'm going to be using the drill, which you need. Or you could even use a hammer, so potentially you don't even need this. So but you could nail it. You could nail it rather than screw it. But you're a professional, so you use screws. I use screws, but also <laughs> uh, just a handsaw. So yeah. if you don't have an electric saw, you can use a handsaw. And with these two tools, you can create lots of different variations yeah. of a bird, bird table and bird feeder. So timber, you've got, this is treated timber? It is. It? Remember, always use external timbers, otherwise it will rot really quickly. So this is external gravel boards. So it's been pressure treated. Um, and I love this because it's, like I say, it lasts for a long time. So this is the stuff that goes at the bottom of your fence where the soil goes. So it's, it's particularly durable sort of timber. Because it's used to sitting the in the ground. It's used to, you know, getting yeah. wet and waterlogged. So I'm going to be using this. This is I'm going to be using for the main structure for the table edge of it. But a little top tip as well is I've, I'm using some of these batten here, which is so when you trim some of your edges, like the top tables, so particularly if you're joining some timbers together, it helps join, helps support them, hold them all together. It yeah. stops any warping as yeah. well. So by yeah. creating a little bit of a so lip, and always a trip. put a rim around the edge. Yeah. It stops yeah. your feed falling off as well, yeah. which is quite nice. Um, and then for the upstand and the legs, I'm going to lift this way up here. I'm going to be using this 2B2 timber. Again, it's still I'm external so glad timber. I'm you call it 2B2. Old they school. all use millimetres now, and I like 2B2 and 4B2. And yeah, and when you go into the timber yard, they still understand what 2B2 means. <laughs> 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 good to so I'll be using this as well for the legs, and I'll be showing you how to angle the legs as well at the bottom so it's supporting. But also, if you don't, you know, you can get the cross bit at the bottom. If you don't want to make that, you could just angle this at a spike and then just... Stay, stay so kept. you basically need something to hold it up and something flat on the top, but yours is just a bit more sophisticated without too much technical nerve. Exactly, and you can stop at any point. So if yeah. at one point you go, it's a bit too much, you've still created a bird table. Yeah, the great thing is at the end you have something which will look good in your garden, yeah. which also is doing our bit. And a great one for doing our bit locally, i.e. here on the piece of earth outside your house, when mm -hmm. it comes to worrying about global warming and climate change, it starts here. Yeah. And if you're doing your bit feeding the birds in your little patch, then you're doing as much as can be expected of you. But it's good for your head as well, just yeah. to chill, just relax and just listen to the birds. I love it. Thank you, Wayne. We're finding out how you've got on a little bit later in the show. Now, earlier, we saw Carpenter Wayne Perry starting to build a bird table. Well, now it's time to see how he's got on. Good Lord, that's sturdy. Ta-da! Oh, he weighs a ton! <laughs> <laughs> um, you wanted a bird table, I've made you a bird table. Yeah, it is. Lovely. And what I love about it, I've only used two tools. I've used a saw and a drill. Yep. And I just wanted to show that you can make something like this with just simple tools. You don't need all the big cutting power tools. So I'm just going to attach this onto the top so it doesn't go anywhere. It's stable. It's stable. Um, and it's treated timber. It, again, it's external, external timber. It's gravel boards. I love a good gravel board. And you could soften These it off the things that go at the bottom of your fence. Exactly. Yeah. So it's made for outside. So it's going to weather really well. And you can paint it and do what you like with it. But obviously, this, you know, could be a bit too adventurous for some people. Well, but I, I'm... It's, I, I'd be very tempted to have a go. I always admire your mitering. My, well, it's always sure. beautiful. They fit. You know, there's no, there's no air gap between them, is there? <laughs> no. But again, the, the mitres obviously is, is a really nice joint, but you could just it's square pieces. Yeah. So for okay. people who are not sure about it, they could just square. But, but if this is a little bit too adventurous, I created this. Oh, and I look. really like this. It's just a really simple one. And again, it's just using the angle mitre, so, and it's using one piece of gravel board. That's so lovely. Sure to yeah, I like that. It's really quite handsome. So you've got a piece of gravel board here. And like yep. I say, I've, I've cut these into three pieces, two for the roof and one for the back. To get this angle, using your wood saw. I remember, you know, last year you showed me this, and I'd never noticed this before. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, I will now do is you see, if you've got that, that's the right angle, and then you got you got a 45 degree angle there. So that way, when you yeah. when I rest that on the that becomes your 45. That was such a revelation <laughs> to me last year. <laughs> a lot of years of DIY. And, 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 it's, and, it's, and, and, and it's, it's such a simple thing, but it means you get that perfect angle. So yeah. use use your saw as a template. Mm. So then you create your template and then we create the perfect roof space on the top. Yeah. Another little top tip that I like to use is if you're um, drilling some pieces of wood together, pre-drill them. So rather than, you know, hang, you know, it's well, tricky to hold two pieces of wood together, I've started these off. So I've got yeah. two screws Did in you there. drill holes for the screws before? No, you, because... You didn't, no, I don't need... It doesn't split. Again, it's, it's rough sawn timber. Right. It's quite soft. It will go straight through anyway. Mm -hmm. So I've pre... 
drilled those in, as in I st started them in, hold this into position, and then I can just screw this down. Slow and steady going forward into it. There is nothing more satisfying, you know, than making things. Oh, I love it. I think that's why I'm a carpenter, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably. <laughs> and then we're putting this on the top here. And you've got a nice little overhang either side there, so you've measured it. Now, clearly, that one is longer, is that much longer than that one. Absolutely. You know me, Alan, I can't bear things to be slightly off centre and stuff like that, so we would screw this. It's not this. a right angle, it's a wrong angle. <laughs> Can I you hold that one for that, would be lovely, actually. Yeah. Should have pre-drilled, took my own advice. <laughs> yes, you know, if you pre-drill that, it's an awful lot easier. Yeah. I, felt, I learned that from Wayne Perry. I'll just yeah. do one there. Yeah. So we've got that uh, so in there. So you fix that, two on each side. Two on each side, and yeah. it holds it all into position. So now we're going to deal with the tin cans. So we've got some tin cans. I need to swap over my drill bit. So we're going to swap it over to a metal drill bit, which is this one here. Mm -hmm. And luckily, tin cans are quite light, so they're not very heavy. So just put that in there. So we've created our, our perfect hole for yep. our tin can. And then we're going to attach this to here. Now, a lovely little top tip. Obviously, these tin cans are quite long, so we need an extension. We need a, a drill bit extension, which you can buy. That's nifty. But another top tip is, at the end of here, yeah. is a magnet. So, obviously, when we're drilling into it, we need it to stay in position. Yeah. So <laughs> Yes, if that weren't magnetic, and you're trying to get try a screw down the bottom. Get it through there. Yeah, I do. And then another top tip is put a washer on the end, because obviously the head of the screw is quite small, mm -hmm. and you, you don't want it to go through. So I'd put that through there. That goes... Thread the eye needle. Yeah, so thread it through first. Thread it through there, and then... <laughs> screw that into position. Brilliant. And if you notice, um, I've just painted these tin cans in just any exterior paint. Um, yeah. If you use the thorn down. And then around the paint. top, you've got copper tape. Well, the copper tape are those slug tapes. You know, uh -huh, they're when you yeah. put around pots that hope, yeah. you know, hopefully deterrent um, um, slugs. But I did that just for decorative effect. For De totally, totally to honest. be decorative. Yeah. There we are. That as, as a little bit. The yeah. last one goes on, and then you can use it. Just attach that to your wall, and there you go. You're a star. Thank you, Wayne. Very impressive build. You can find details on how to build a bird table like Wayne's. Just follow the on-screen link.